All right, so here's the edge of the door. He's got a 10 foot door. Usually, if here's his wall, let's say he's got a two by six wall, and the garage door is gonna sit down, the track sits on the inside of the wall a little bit, so the garage door is gonna sit down right about here. So we're gonna taper this little piece just a little bit, and the way we do that is usually dig out just a little bit right along the form. Maybe down about, a, down about a half inch all the way along the door. Cut a little taper in that. There, so there's my cut down. And then I'll just scrape a little bit out this way. Just to give that a little bit of an angle. And I can smooth that out with my mag like that. That's how I taper it in front of the door. We'll clean that up as we go, but this is just to get it roughed in. You want to wait till it's too hard to do this, then you're gonna, you're really gonna struggle getting that, that taper the way you want it. This is right about perfect. The concrete's still soft enough. It's about 45 minutes after the pour right now, but it's kind of chilly today. On a hotter day, I've been doing this sooner. Yeah, it is the taper. That's all I need to do just for right now. I'll let that firm up a little bit more, then I can run my edger in there. A little different angle of that taper. You can see how that cuts down about a half inch below the top of that board. Gives it a nice place for the door to sit down, and then when it, if it rains, and the rain hits the garage door, it's gonna wanna run out away from the slab and not back under the door. All right, that's gonna do it for a few minutes, so We'll check back in with you in about probably 20, 30 minutes. We'll check back in with you. So when I'm magging these edges at this point, I can press down, I can barely press into there with my fingers, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So that's just about ready to power trowel. But it's still, it's still uh, soft enough on top so I can get my edges all mag. So when I'm doing that, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure down on the mag and I'm tipping it in the direction I'm going. That's all I'm looking to do. I'm just looking to get that a little bit smoother than the bow float. And then if I got some places like this I need to fill in, I got some cream right here from just magging it. I can just scrape that a little bit and that cream sticks to the bottom of the mag. Then I can push it down right in there and then go right back over it, smooth it back out. So that's the stage it's at right now. So I'm just going around and kind of pre-magging all my edges before I power trowel it. Getting them nice and smooth. And that's the basic process to start your, start your finishing.
All right, so based on how that felt magging it, I think it's just about ready to power trial. So we'll clean up my mag, get the power trial started, and we'll get it hit for the first time. Okay, it's an hour and 45 minutes after we got done pouring. So it's 8.43, we got done, I don't know, we got done around 7. It's probably a little bit before 7, actually. And it's feeling like it's about ready to power trial. So there's a couple ways I check it. I can press in with my fingers, which I've already done right here. I'm not even I'm not even really making a dent with my fingers which tells me it's firmed up pretty good but I can tell just from magging the surface with my mag float that there's still a little bit of cream on the surface and because of the size of this because it's pretty small I mean I don't want to get on it too early and the other way we check it is just to step on it like this check our footprints as you can see I'm just barely sinking in at all so that tells me it's about ready for the first hit right here. I, I can still feel it under my feet, it's a tiny bit soft. It's not like rock hard, even though it, it may look it to you on the video. Um, but it's ready. We're gonna get the power trial going and make sure everything's on. Gas is on, choke it. We turn on the safety switch. It's a tiny bit of throttle. Make sure we grab the handle really good with the left hand because sometimes sometimes depending on what the throttles are like on these power trials them blades want to start spinning as soon as it starts they're supposed to just idle until you until you give it more throttle but you just always got to be careful have a good grip here with your left hand and once it starts make sure you you know make sure you move back and grab it with both hands because it's going to want to take off and you got to be able to control it now with this power trial, when you lift up on the handles, it wants to go left a little bit. When you push down, it wants to go right. So there's a fine balance in between picking up and pushing down to kind of steady it. And that's what we're shooting for here as we start it. Yeah. I can tell by looking at how it's working up the pace that it's just right to hit it. I'm gonna turn the throttle down a little bit. I'm gonna work my pattern from east to west, I call it. So I'm gonna go left. Left is my finished pattern. And then I bring the power trial down and I put the top of the power trial right even with the bottom of that last finished pattern. And I'm just looking to work up the concrete a little bit. You know, you can see I'm getting it mostly worked up, but not, not 100%, and that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is, once I get this going to the right, I'm going to set up and go halfway right in between the two. And that's my finish. I want to make sure everything is worked up and looks good on this finish path. Trying to take out the both bolt lines, like that one right there. Trying to clean up any little rock holes and stuff like that you see left from the bolt float. Just give it a nice a nice power trial look on the surface that's kind of going to look kind of rough on this first hit but as you go more and more as the concrete sets up and gets firmer and firmer it's going to smooth up quite a bit right now i'm just barely pushing down a little bit on the handle i'm using my hip right here you can see it on the handle to give me a little bit of leverage on the handle kind of moving it up and down with my hip and i'm picking slightly up on the handle on this path it's going nice and slow i want to make sure i don't hit those ankle bolts Get that full flow line out. Making sure I get that that full flow line is a little bit deeper than the rest, so I'm gonna make sure I get it out as I do this.
Fudge that bofo line down a little bit as I go. Looking pretty good for the first half. Gonna work my way right off the back of the slab here. Trying to make sure I don't set my feet like right on the very edge either, because then I'll have to kind of take my footprints out with my hand trial. I'd rather have the machine take my footprints out. hit. I'm going to go around and trial my edges now like this. Oh, I've got to grab my hand trial. Go around and trial my edges while the concrete's still pretty like what I call kind of wet on top, green. If I let that sit five or ten minutes that surface is going to dry up. It's just going to make trial my edges a little harder. I'll start with the doorway that's been sitting for a little bit. Get this doorway trialed out like that. So what we like to do after we trial the door and we feel like it's firm enough is we'll give that just a little broom finish just to give it a little texture and then that's gonna that's gonna finish up the garage door other than running the edge over it. Just give it a broom finish like that. Yeah, that gives the, that finishes off the tapered part. Then I'll just run my edger over it, finish up the rounded edge. We'll do this doorway first. Looking to round that edge off like that and leave that finished tool mark like that and that finishes off the garage door. Yeah. That was the guy I worry about is just trialing the flat part of my edges. Clean that off and we'll be done with that. A 
little bit of a pain finishing in between all the anchor bolts, but it's just the way it goes. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. You got to work around them. So that's how I trial the edges. The edges are trialed, they're down pretty smooth. This has been sitting in the sun now for 10 15 minutes. It's really pretty, it's warming up pretty good. So I think, I think I'm just gonna buzz it again real quick and then I can shut the trial off and give it a few more minutes. But overall, it's going pretty good for as cold as it was this morning. Now you can see how I, what I call I go east west looking at it from the other angle here. So I'm going to cross my pattern now instead of instead of going this way with my pattern now I'm going to go this way. That just helps flatten out the concrete even more. If you keep going the same way, your slab's going to kind of do that a little bit. Won't really be that noticeable, but that's that's just the general way that that trial finishes. It leaves tiny little waves. Keep flattening them out every time you go, three or four hits and by the time you're done, you got a nice flat slab. One thing I like to do before I start the power trial is just I call it break the blades from the surface. Sometimes they'll stick to the paste. I just give it a little tug and I break it like that before I start it up. Yeah, making sure I don't hit those anchor bolts. Always finish going to the left, bring it back down to the right. See my finish pattern up there, the full trial width, full trial width here. Then I'll go up and I'll split the difference right there, and this is my finish pattern. So this just helps keep the floor a lot flatter than just running it in a random direction. a little bit smoother than the hit before. Probably could have gave it a few more minutes. But that's all right. Better a tiny bit early than, than too late. Again, I'm trying not to walk on my edge where I just ran my hand trial so kind of straddle that part. Got a good grip on the handles. I want to make sure I have a good tight grip. Don't want to let go. Kind of just slightly pushing downwards here to get it to go this way. I let go of the handles right now, this thing would want to spin to my right really fast, not a control. Now I'm pushing up on the handle just a little bit. And when I get over to here, I'll cut it off.
All right, so we're going to give it a few minutes, probably 15, 20 minutes. It's going to be ready to go again. It's going to be a lot smoother this next time we hit it, but I'll check back in with you in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's hit it again. Again, I want to make sure I break my blades before I just go pull the recoil over. Just tug them and break them so they don't stick and pick up a big chunk under there. Bring my trowel out with me just in case I do pick up a chunk, I can fill it in while I'm out there. Just a tiny tug like that, get them broke real quick and get it started. Buzz my edges real quick. I'll back my truck back up so I can reach it with a crane. And then I'm going to buzz it and then I'll take that off and the floor will be done. Looking pretty good right now. That's looking like a nice garage floor finish right there. backed up all right let's buzz that and I'll pull this thing off and just slightly tug on it break the blades hopefully it don't pick up like it did over there
pick up enough paste to get in there and fill that thing in. Sometimes that happens as the concrete sets up and gets really hard. Hopefully it doesn't want to do it again right here. Pretty good, all gone. All right, so that's the finished floor right there. Just gonna strip the forms. We're gonna saw cut a joint across the middle. I'll snap a chalk line for that. Just one going this way. And that's it, do it done. I'm just gonna clean up the tools. Probably, I'll probably strip the forms off and then I'm gonna get out of here for today. Luke's coming back with a saw. Luke will end up cutting the joint a little bit later today.